Summertime, and throughout Europe, the masses are on the move. Refugees from offices, factories, farms, from families, friends and neighbours, perhaps from themselves. Tourists, one of the most remarkable phenomena of this remarkable century. Throughout Europe, the pleasure palaces and playgrounds await the annual invasion. The SS Yadran sails from Venice, bound for Rijeka on the coast of Yugoslavia, with a human cargo of temporarily displaced persons from 20 different nations people of all ages, classes and backgrounds. People who like to maintain a tenuous postal link with the life they are fleeing, encircling the globe with chains of picture postcards. Dear Sherlene, it don't seem three days ago I was walking down the dirty old high street with you in the pouring flim rain. And now I'm sailing down the Adriatic like a lord on his private yacht. Well, more or less. I wish you were here, Cheryl, but as your mum wouldn't let you come, I'll have to do my sightseeing on my own. And there'll be sights worth seeing, believe you me. I got my beady eyes on one or two already, ha ha. My dear Veronica, as I pen these hasty lines, our ship approaches the harbour of Rijeka. A port of some consequence, but for all that, a clean and attractive town. When I knew it 25 years ago, it was called Fiumi. But then everything was so different 25 years ago. I shall make my first stop at a little resort along the coast that used to be called Abatia, but is now called Apatia. Oh well, a rose by any other name. It still has the same pretty little harbour, and beyond it, a rather Edwardian front, like a Balkan Bournemouth or Eastbourne. Instead, however, of those awful rows of wooden beach huts smelling of men's socks that litter our own coasts, Opatia has a most original bathing station, like a big pier sideways onto the sea. I shall not, of course, bathe myself. At my age, I cannot accustom myself to the almost total exposure which now seems inseparable from a dip in the sea. I shall find a comfortable hotel and get my seed, as it were, before exploring further. I shall leave the sun and the sea to the young. Southwards from Opatia and Rijeka for almost 400 miles, the coastline of Yugoslavia is defended from the open sea by an army of offshore islands, many of them narrow spears of land 20, 30 or more miles long. The islands are peopled by fishermen, the waters with a hundred varieties of fish, tunny, lobsters, crawfish, crabs, scampi, zubatach, sepal, orad, morena and barbuni. In the summer, the tourists arrive and fishing for food becomes fishing trips for sport. Dear Peter, I said I'd drop your line and here it is. I wish you were here, old boy. I'm having a whale of a time. Two days ago, I landed up in these Dalmatian Islands. And before I knew where I was, I'd hooked up with these two local lads, Jekyll and Hyde. Well, that's the nearest I can get to pronouncing their real names. Since then, I've put so many fishing hours in, I've practically grown fins. You'd like Jekyll and Hyde. There are men of few words, which is just as well, as I wouldn't understand them if they weren't. But we get along famously with 20 English words, 10 hand signs, 5 winks, 2 coughs and a sneeze. It's the simple life all right, but that's the life for me.
Some stay in the islands for the fishing, others pass through, cruising down the island channels en route for more exotic pleasures, stopping here and there to sample the local curiosities and snapshot the evidence of a holiday that was different. Darling Nigel, I still think you're a pig not coming with me, but I can almost forgive you now. I'm having such a blissful time. Yesterday, Alice and I discovered the most exclusive little restaurant in all Yugoslavia. A quaint little stone box on the edge of the sea, hundreds of miles from nowhere. The landlord looked like the Jolly Roger himself, but he prepared the most fabulous fish supper I've ever tasted. If he set himself up in the King's Road, he'd make a fortune. The local yokels are so full of local colour, it just isn't true. There's one old boy who sits in the sun all day mending nets. Whose nets, I didn't like to ask, but they can't be his. He's 104 if he's a day. He has the most divine face, carved straight out of the living rock. I hope you look as virile and wicked when you're 104. Many of these wandering masses, particularly the migrants from the north, are merely pursuing the sun, a chase that ends in the pursuer's complete surrender to his prey. Hiya, Dickie boy. Shall I tell you a secret? I've never had it so good. And you can say that again, Dad. In this delectable cosmopolitan playground, I've become a man of the world, a sophisticated connoisseur of a wide variety of national and international types. From minute details of figure and costume, I can identify any of the specimens laid out for my inspection with the assurance of an expert. This, the chic cheek of the French. That, the clean lines of the Swede. Here, the opulence of the West German. There, the rosebud reticence of our own national product. As relaxation from these arduous studies, I have been investigating a new method of traveling to work on the water. Properly handled will relieve the roads and railways of no end of rush hour jam. As soon as I've mastered the finer points, you just watch me go, man, go. Country that you feel is truly Balkan. This is a proper landscape for brigands and feuds, for partisans and commando wars. This river bathed the wounds of Greeks, Romans, Turks and Slavs during the long birth pangs of Europe. Today, in cool mountain water that once refreshed a weary legion, an idle boy dares the rocks and currents to win a smile of admiration from a passing typist a thousand miles from our office, realizing for a fortnight the dream of 50 weeks. Squatting in the sun, a bronze beggar boy invites the stranger to spend a night or two in the most modern tourist temple in Shibenik. For those who like to rub a little culture into their suntan, Shibenik is worth a visit. My dear Veronica, as you know, a holiday would not be the same for me without a cathedral or two to potter around. And this one in Shibenik is well worth visiting. They began building it in 1431 and took over a hundred years to finish. By then, the poor citizens were so nearly bankrupt, they could not afford statues for the niches around the main door. They'd finished the Lion Gate earlier, so that does have some rather amusing statues of Adam and Eve. They look rather ashamed of themselves, poor things. Perhaps it's as well. Medieval sculpture can be regretfully frank sometimes. delighted by the frieze of heads around the apse. They're all different, and each one reminds me of someone at home. I shall brush up on my modern sculpture when I go to Split and visit the home of Ivan Mestrovich. He died only recently in the United States but he gave his home and estate to the nation as a permanent museum for his sculptings. Of course, he was internationally famous and very, very rich before he died, but he never forgot his homeland. I do admire a man like that. 
Another local boy who made good was the Roman Emperor Diocletian, who built himself an enormous palace near his birthplace and after 20 years of imperial power, abdicated and retired to his homeland. Centuries later, the palace became a refuge and a stronghold against the Slavs who invaded and colonized Dalmatia. The palace is still inhabited. There are some 300 homes within the palace walls. The great town and port, which grew up round the palace, is now called Split. Once it was the center of the world. Today, it's a target for thousands of tourists who've never heard of Diocletian. Dear Sherl, here I am in a place called Split. Sounds silly, I know, but it's really a smashing place for sightseeing. My feet ache like nobody's business. They say the ancient Greeks lived here, and the ancient Romans, and the ancient Slavs, and the ancient Venetians, and I don't know who else. But they was all ancient, and they all built ruins which you can see today. And very nice they are too. Some of these old boys were proper artists-like, which makes you think, since they didn't have no real education in those days. There's statues all over the flipping place. I wonder if they do me in my leopard skin swimming trunks. That reminds me. I think I'm going to cool my feet off in their bathing beach. They've got a very nice one just down the road from here. So long. Dear Peter, I know you like roughing it on holiday and living off the land, so why not come to Split next year? They have a motor camp for people like you. All you need is your wagon, a tent, camp beds, folding chairs, collapsible tables, plastic plates, pocket knives, paper sheets, drip dry shirts, more wireless, and a bottle opener. Then you'll be quite comfortable, you old gypsy, since the site provides lavatories, light, running water, and even a sink to peel your spuds in. Myself, I'll stick to the hotels. However people travel to Dalmatia, when they get there, they find the most enjoyable way to travel is by boat. Or to visit the islands, you must travel by boat. Take a boat from Split and visit Var, as self-contained an island paradise as any modern cruiser could desire. For centuries, it was under the sway of Venice, and the winged lions, the emblem of that once great power, are seen everywhere. But now, the only invaders are the tourists, and they are more than welcomed. Come to Var in winter. Half price only for rainy days, no charge at all for snow, fog or frost. And in the summer, an added spice for the tourists, Var stages a drama festival in its small but beautiful theatre, built in 1612 and one of the oldest working theatres in Europe. And Var also is one of the best beaches in the Adriatic. Sun, sea and sand, infallible yours. My dear old Dick, if there's anything nicer than being where I am, it's being where I am thinking of you stuck at home. I expect it's raining, isn't it? The weather here is marvellous, and I'm enjoying myself immensely with a party of Belgians. We well, don't ask Belgians, they just are. Luckily, the men in the party spend most of their time skin diving and underwater fishing. They say the water around these islands is ideal for it. Good luck to them, I say, for it's women free to entertain me and improve my French. Darling Nigel, here I am again eating my way down the Adriatic. My heart bleeds for fling your way around the home counties on a cricketing holiday, while I'm here on a hotel terrace and bar on a warm Mediterranean evening with the blue, blue sea gurgling away on the rocks below. A stuffy old thing playing cricket when you could have been here with me. This place is just made for romance with a capital R-O-M. Alice is all right as a companion, but I'm too young to need a companion. Well, darling, if I can't have romance, I can still eat, drink, and be merry. Tomorrow, alas, we leave this gorgeous spot and return to Spit in a wonderful supercar thing called a hydroplane. I'll write again from Dubrovnik. Dubrovnik lies towards the southern end of the Dalmatian coast. Once it was a mighty port called Ragusa, and its ships, trading in all the treasures of the Mediterranean, 
were known after their home port as Argosies. For centuries, Ragusa rivaled Venice until a great earthquake almost destroyed the city in 1667. Today, only fishing boats and excursion launches enter the harbour. Originally, Dubrovnik was two towns, one Latin, the other Slav, but in the 13th century, they merged behind a common city wall. Despite the earthquake, many of the old gates and defences still stand, and every day, citizens and tourists alike climb the steps to stroll in the sun on the ramparts. These defences served Dubrovnik well during the long struggles for power in the Mediterranean, and for over 800 years, it remained in effect a free and independent city-state. Dubrovnik has a patron saint, Saint Blaise, who in the 10th century appeared to one of the city elders in a dream and warned the city of an imminent attack by the Venetians. The attack was defeated and St. Blaise has been a popular hero ever since. His effigy adorns many of the historic buildings and Dubrovnik is rich in those. My dear Veronica, undoubtedly Dubrovnik is the high spot of my holiday. Seldom, if ever before, have I been able to do so much really informative sightseeing in such a small area. This city has some beautiful antiquities and yet has a gay and vigorous atmosphere. But then walk round the cloisters of the Franciscan Monastery and you're in another world. There's a charming terrace street linking the old twin cities and this is the main promenade where everyone meets everyone else. I do think it's a pity the harbour no longer houses any of the great Argus's of the past. They should have kept one at least, but I'm told that the British seized the last one during the war with Napoleon. It seems so unlike us, but I'm sure we must have had a very good reason. Of course, the town has long outgrown the old walls, and nowadays there are modern bathing beaches for tourists, but I shall leave them to the young things. Today, I shall make Anne to see the historic villages in the Canavla Valley. Dear Cheryl, today I went to a little village called Chilippi and saw the virgins. Honest, I did. Every Sunday, all the unmarried girls dress up to the nines and parade the main street with their mums. A sort of advert like to let the boys know who's left. They looked a proper treat too. How would you like your mum to wake you up and down the high street every Sunday? A chap told me the girls here are the tallest, best lookers in the old country. And in the old days, the wicked old lords came here to pick themselves a nice little girlfriend like. What a lark, eh? South of Dubrovnik, a narrow strait between rocky cliffs leads into the Gulf of Kotor. Along the shores of this inland sea, a great community of sailors grew up who formed the most ancient union of seafarers, the Guild of Bocca Sailors. Navigators from here steered the Venetian galleons at the Great Battle of Lepanto. And here, Tsar Peter the Great enrolled his sailors to form the Russian Navy. Today, the men of Perast, Kota and Dobrota ferry villagers and tourists from one coastal town to another. And on a journey south from Kota, a group of the villagers is sure to start up a folk song. Not to please the tourists, but to please themselves. For down here, folk songs are still the natural songs of the people. Dear Peter, I'll bet you've never heard a Serbian skiffle group. I have. All the way from Kotor to Budva, on a little coastal steamer like a day excursion boat. This place Budva's got something. It's a little old walled town hanging over the sea. It has a pocket-sized cathedral that goes back a thousand years and a whopping big hotel where all the big knobs used to stay before the war. The hotel's modern enough, but go outside, it's like you've gone back 500 years. Ah, I like it here. From Budva, the beach stretches south for six miles to an even smaller city, Sveti Stefan. A miniature kingdom perched on a rock in the sea with a long narrow causeway linking it to the shore. Ten years ago, it was a dying town with a hundred inhabitants scratching a poor existence now that piracy no longer pays. But the tourists have saved it. 
the Yugoslavian government, with an eye on foreign currency, sent one of its best architects to Sveti Stefan. The cottages were restored as tourist villas, the terraces enlarged, and the modern hotel built. And the tourists came, and came again. And Sveti Stefan sits serene upon the blue translucent sea, smiling at the strangers who have saved its life. Darling Nigel, this is the nearest to heaven I'll ever get, I fear. What it would be if only you were here. You just don't know what you're missing. Next year, I insist, I absolutely insist that we come here together. Zabrata ni na dva, 